Okay, so I thought I would uh, give you this quick little video on um, how to find infinity focus on a lens like this. This is the kit lens that came with my uh, my Nikon D90. It's a digital SLR camera. And uh, the problem is that uh, on the lens itself, there's no distance scale as uh, some higher end lenses have a distance scale. And also, if you do have a distance scale on your lens, how do you know that it's actually accurate in respect to the CMOS or CCD sensor in your camera? Um, I like to take uh, pictures at night, like of stars, Um, things like that, uh, landscapes, and I need to be able to find infinity focus on a lens. It's easy to do in the daytime, uh, especially with the aid of an autofocus system in the camera. You can do it quite easy with a, a distant subject, a, a cloud or a mountaintop, but at night it's a little bit of a different struggle, especially on this lens that I have here, uh, because um, the focus ring, there's no uh, distance scale to begin with and as well um, it has a clutch which means um, it comes to a, a stop but I can actually turn it past that stop in both directions. So I want to show you um, a couple steps you can take and make some test pictures to reliably duplicate the uh, infinity uh, focus on your lens and this works for I would assume about every lens. I've got three lenses with my camera. I have a 35 millimeter uh, f1.8 as well as a 70 to 300 4, 5 to 5, 6 uh, lens and two of the lenses are VR lenses so uh, the first thing if you're going to be taking uh, long exposures uh, especially at night you'll want to turn off the VR as well as turn off the autofocus on the lens so let me start by showing you uh, how to find focus. And for practical purposes, I'm just going to shoot out my back window in my house. Here. I'm just going to show you on a tree that's about 40 feet away from my back window how to find a focus spot. But you can always apply this to infinity focus. Um, I used the moon to focus on the other day when we had nearly a full moon, and it worked out quite well. So first off, I'm going to try to get my... Uh, little movie camera to show you um, where your focus indicator is in your camera. Now it's going to vary from manufacturer to manufacturer. This is a Nikon and uh, I have a little focus indicator in there and I'll show you where uh, it is. Okay, so here's the focus indicator. The, uh, just to the left of the shutter speed and the aperture you'll see this little dot and um, as I turn the focus ring, you can see that the dot comes on and off. And that's an indication to let you know that the camera has perceived it to be in focus. So look through the viewfinder and find your focus indicator, which is normally a little square or a rectangle. Uh, some cameras have multi-point autofocus and some have single point. I have it in the single point mode right now. And uh, as you can see, the I can actually move the focus indicator to different locations in the picture, up, down, right, and left here. And I've got it just focused uh, on my counter here. So when you find focus, this is rough focus because I still have quite a bit of play in it. But when that little indicator is on, it lets you know that the camera perceives that to be in focus. So that's a good starting point uh, to figure out. And right now, according to my scale, I am at 27 to 28 in here and I'm inside the house. So uh, to find infinity focus, well let's actually try to zoom, I will try to zoom the lens way in here and see exactly when it finds focus here. There it is. Okay there's, it's hard to get it to stay right on there, it's so such a tight adjustment. And it's at about 27 right now. So uh, zoomed out, you'll find it much uh, harder to achieve focus or you'll get a much accurate, more accurate focus reading there. Okay, so I thought I'd just use this lens here. This is the uh, 70 to 300 millimeter, 4.5 to 5.6. Um, 
I wanted to show you uh, what I did to the lens here. As you notice, there's a little uh, arrow pointer right here. And I put a scale on the focus ring itself. And um, what I've done here is I, I took a 100 millimeter scale and I printed it at half size, so it's only actually 50 mil millimeters long. So each little tick mark is uh, half of one millimeter. And now uh, I just, uh, with tape, just attached it to the focus ring here. Now, your lens may have a mechanical stop, but mine does not, which means I can turn my focus ring until it, it comes to the stop right here, and I've got the stop set at exactly 10 millimeters here, or 10 ticks as the case may be. I'm using 10 as my zero reference point. If I turn it past that stop, it'll actually keep on going. I can turn the focus ring all the way around because it does have a clutch on the inside of it. Even if I turn it to the other direction, it'll come to a stop right here. And um, I can certainly take it past that stop. So basically, the thing that you want to do to align this is rotate it uh, to the right in this direction until it gets to your... Uh, in my case, I'm using 10 as the mark, so align it right to 10, back it off, bring it back to the 10 mark, and make sure it stops right at 10, and it does every time it stops right there. And so what I did is I took this lens, and the other night, we had a clear night, and it was nearly a full moon. I took it, and I zoomed it all the way out to 300 millimeters because, uh, as you know, focus is much more critical the longer the uh, length of the lens is. And so using my scale that I put on there, I zoomed it, I put it on my tripod, and I just I turned it until the focus indicator lit in the manual focus mode. And as I recall, it lit at about 23 to 24 tick marks. So. What I've done is I've taken some test exposures. I backed this off by uh, two tick marks each way, and I've taken five exposures, five or six actually. And each exposure, I moved it by one tick mark. And I took fairly quick exposures. Um, they were one second exposures of some stars, so the stars wouldn't leave very big trails. And the thing I was looking for was the very faint stars in the background. That's how I was going to test my focus. And I found two stars right next to each other that um, I will show. So every time I took a picture, I moved it by one little tick mark. And I determined that the optimal focus point, as I, as I calibrated it to 10, the optimal focus point was at about 24 to 25. And as you can see, even though the optimal focus point was 24 to 25, according, if I hold the lens perfectly straight with the camera, the factory infinity indicator actually is off a little bit. So to find true infinity, I'd have to go just slightly to the right of the infinity logo here. So their little uh, scale was not quite accurate. But uh, you could probably do this with any lens. Just make sure that it does have a mechanical stop. For instance, this is my uh, 35mm f1.8. I did the same thing with it, so I stopped it at 10. And uh, amazingly, the, the focus was virtually in the same area to within a couple of tick marks here. It was in about the 23 to 25 uh, range. And uh, the same thing with my se uh, 70, or excuse me, it's an 18 to 105 kit lens that came with the camera. Uh, it found focus. Now, see, this lens does not have any kind of a uh, distance indicator on the lens whatsoever. Uh, one thing I wanted to point out, make sure as you're doing this that you have the lens in the manual focus position. Uh, some lenses, when you're in the autofocus position, engage a gear inside the lens, which can actually do damage if you try to forcibly turn the focus ring. Uh, make sure yours has a clutch or not before you try this. If you have a lens that has the vibration reduction uh, before taking any long exposures, make sure you turn that to off. Otherwise, you could experience a little bit of uh, shake as it moves over a long exposure as it settles. 
Um, my camera itself, in addition to my lens, having a manual focus indicator, the, the camera itself has a auto manual focus switch, so you want to make sure that's in the manual mode. Um, some lenses, like I said, this, this lens has what they call the SWM silent wave motor built into the lens, and it's, it's a large rotary motor that actually turns the internal working. So as you go to focus this on autofocus, you'll notice that uh, the focus ring does not turn, but the distance indicator does turn because the motor disengages the clutch on the inside of the lens as you focus it. So if you've used autofocus, you'll want to go back and make sure that you recalibrate your mark to achieve optimal infinity focus. Um, and as you test, take your test uh, photos, make sure that you have your depth of field your, or your depth of field minimal, so your aperture is open to the widest you can possibly get it. Like on my uh, 35 millimeter f1.8, I had it open at 1.8. Um, once you stop the aperture down, the depth of field increases. And you could actually use a depth of field calculator if you wanted to, and you could, you could probably go out and measure some objects uh, find out where 50 feet is, find out where 100 feet is, and you could actually make those little marks on your reference here. And so you could actually defocus, if you know that F11 focus is clear over here, you could defocus infinity all the way over there, and then anything on a lens like this, uh, f you know, once you've got your depth of field calcula calculations done, you could figure out that anything from like 10 feet to infinity would be an acceptable focus. So uh, let me show you some test pictures that I've taken uh, with all three of my lenses. And uh, hopefully um, this video will help you determine where to find infinity focus on a lens, especially like this one that does not have an infinity indicator. Or even like this one that does have an infinity indicator, but it is not accurate. So here's some photos for you to look at. All these photos that I took. Um, we're taken in the highest resolution mode of the camera, which on this one it's, it's about 12 megapixels. And they were all cropped to approximately uh, 1920 by 1080, which is the video resolution I'm shooting this video in, HD video. So what you're seeing on the screen is basically as close as I could get to a one-to-one -one pixel ratio uh, to HD video. And so as you can see with the 35 millimeter lens, uh, the sharpest pictures that were taken were when the scale was set to either 23 or 24. And so um, let's take a look at the other lenses. So as you can see, uh, with the 18-105 uh, to 105 lens zoomed all the way out to 105 millimeters, uh, the sharpest pictures were taken between approximately oh. 23 and 24. So as you can see with the 300 millimeter lens, uh, the clearest picture was definitely at 25. So at 25, it was the absolute clearest picture on this one. Well, I, I hope you've enjoyed uh, this video of how to find uh, infinity focus 
on a lens that either does not have a distance indicator or has an inaccurate uh, distance indicator. Thanks for watching.